Morning, gang. Okay, well, that was fun. I'm a little hot at the moment. It's about 8.30 here on uh, Saturday night, so I'm recording this for the morning. And just as I sat down to record it, Mrs. Pinball decided she'll let the dogs out so they don't bark. And what happened? We had a bird fly in the door. So I spent the last 20 minutes trying to get a little chickadee or something like that out of the house and trying to figure out what the hell's a bird doing flying around at 8.30 at night. But all right, so here's what we got. Okay, so getting into what we're really here for. Uh, one thing I've noticed severely lacking in all the talk on all the channels about prepping is, what about the kids, okay? Now, I don't have children at home anymore, but this idea came to me last night when I was out with friends. Uh, we had to stop off at their uh, daughter's house to drop off some baby formula, and an idea was born. And a very serious one at that, okay? So after this experience, you know, like I said, I realized I've never seen a video on all the channels I watch about prepping uh, prepping for children. So I took some of the knowledge of prepping that I've got, plus that of being a dad, and along with a little research, I decided to share the info with you guys. Now, most of us could easily say, or I could easily say, hey, I don't have kids anymore, so why bother? Okay, but... Do you have grandkids? Does anyone in your mag have kids? Anyone in your mag have grandkids? You know, what happens in an SHTF situation to those kids if something happens to the parents? Guess what? You got kids again. Okay. So maybe you aren't doing anything now, uh, but we prep because we don't know what's going to happen to in the future. You know, maybe you will have another child. Maybe you'll have a grandchild. Maybe you'll become that surrogate parent. Anyway, maybe you aren't buying the things now or doing the training now, but you damn sure better know what you're doing when the time comes, okay? So I'm going to break this down into age groups, and I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a ton more things to do than I mentioned in a 10-minute video, but as usual, like with everything else, I want you guys to think about this and figure out how it would fit into your own prepping for your own situation, okay? Because again, all of us are different. There's no one-size-fits-all approach. I've said that a million times. So I just kind of try to plant the seed. You guys got to make the tree grow. All right, so let's start with infants, say zero to two, all right? And of course, we're preppers, so food is the first thing that comes to mind. Now, of course, breast milk is the preferred meeting, uh, method of feeding, and... My question is, what happens if mom's not around, okay? Either out, away from the homestead, you know, whatever, or just not around, okay? You know, having some backup formula may be a solution, say Similac or Enfamil or something like that. But you need to know if the infant can tolerate a formula. Some kids can't, okay? Goat's milk is another option that I've heard people talk about. But again, you need to know ahead of time if, you know, the baby can... Uh, tolerate a formula, okay? Finding out in SHTF that a baby can't tolerate formula and you've got cases of it in your pantry, uh, not a good time to learn a lesson, okay? Now, stored breast milk is also a great idea, but you got to make sure you've got another backup because it's a perishable item. It's not going to last forever, uh, you know, and then if the power does go out, okay, you know, it's, again, perishable, and if something need, something does, in fact, happen to mom, you know, you need to be able to feed something to that infant for a long time. And, you know, you know it's not like, you know, a two-month-old can even start feeding them green beans or whatever, so it's not going to work. Okay. But the other thing you need to know, you know, never give a baby plain water. Never give a baby undiluted cow's milk. I mean, these can cause some serious... Uh, health problems for the kid. I mean, you know, plain water can cause water intoxication for a baby. Plain cow's milk, undiluted cow's milk, cow's milk can give them kidney damage, okay, from everything that's in. I think it's the, I don't, maybe it's the fats, but I want to say the, uh, all the minerals that are in cow's milk is just too much for a, an infant to handle. So things to think about. You know, clothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary for infants, you know, just a lot of it, you know, probably twice, three times as much as inf uh, baby clothing as you'd normally have because washing clothes ain't going to be as easy as just throwing stuff in the washing machine, throwing some soap in there and letting it do its thing. You're going to be out hand washing everything. Okay. We all know what 
baby clothes smell like, okay? If you want to do that by hand for a couple hours every day, you better shape than I am because I couldn't handle that, okay? As for diapers, uh, you know, either stockpile tons of them and, of course, spend a boatload of money, okay? Or learn how to buy cloth or learn how to use cloth diapers, okay? You don't have to use them. Now, just learn how, you know, swaddle a baby in them or whatever. You know, go out and buy a bundle of diapers, cloth diapers. They're cheap, okay? And if you never have to use them for babies, who cares? They make great rags. Just be ready for anybody who's ex-military to ask you what you're going to spit shine because that's what we used to spit shine boots, okay? They work great. All right, so let's, kid grows a little bit. Now we're talking about toddlers, two to three-year-olds. Food. Now, baby food is pretty much what you're going to be feeding a toddler, and you can buy this, uh, but considering the cost of baby food, that can get extremely expensive too. So you need to learn how to make baby food, you know. I mean, the, the kids will soon be able to eat regular food, but depending on where they fall into the range here, you know, at 24 months, they're going to need pureed food, you know, at 36 months, you know, and older, maybe not, you know, it depends on the kid, every one of them is different, but you're going to need to know how to make baby food, you know, and so the kids will eat it, you got to feed the kids, okay. Clothing, uh, same for babies, get plenty of extra clothes, uh, but what I'd say here, maybe, you know, in your mag or maybe in your neighborhood, you know, this, this could be a good way to build people in your mag, talk to them a little bit about a clothing swap, okay? You know, you've got a two-year-old and they've got a four-year-old, okay? Well, maybe when their four-year-old outgrows the clothes, maybe you can buy, barter, whatever, them for those clothes because that kid's outgrown them and your kid need, now needs that size. You can do the same thing with yours. Somebody else got a baby. Hey, I've got two-year-old clothes, so I'm down the way, okay? You know, kids' clothing is going to be a barter item that nobody talks about, and you're going to wind up on both the giving and the receiving side of it, okay? One important thing I'd say to do with toddlers, though, potty train them as soon as you can. Now, I know some people wait until the kids are like four to potty train them, and others have them potty trained before they're two, okay? It's a parental decision. I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm just saying in an SHTF situation, you're not going to be wanting changing diapers for three years, Okay. You know, if for no other reason, for sanitation, okay? If the kid can clean themselves and take care of business that way, it's going to make your life not only easier, but it's also going to keep you guys from getting sick. You know, and then think of flies or whatever as, as well. So, okay. So moving on to the young ones, say four to six. Food, by now they should be eating regular food, so normal preps here are fine. You know, just remember, they're kids, so they're going to want spaghetti, macaroni and cheese, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you're going to need to have some of that on hand. But, you know, remember, you're still parents. If they're hungry, they're going to eat whatever you, whatever you put in front of them, okay? And especially if food's short, they're not going to go, Mom, I don't like that tough. You ain't eating dinner, kid, period. That's it. Uh, clothing. By this age, the kids may be able to do a little bit of work, okay? Collect sticks for a fire, pick vegetables, collect eggs, whatever it would be. Again, depends on your situation. So it's important for you to prepare them to be outside for longer periods of time, okay? Now, depending on your climate. I mean, if you're in Miami, you're not worried about buying long johns. But if you're in Miami, where the hell are you going to be a prepper in Miami? Uh, but maybe you need long johns. You need work gloves for the kids, Uh but because kids are still outgrowing clothing so quickly, think of things you can use to layer to keep them warm instead of one big bulky coat, because that one big bulky coat is going to be useless in a year, okay? Uh, you know, by next year, they've outgrown it. We all know that. All right. This is where we get into the important part, okay? Again, we're talking about kids, four to six here. Training. This is the age where you can begin to train the kids on prepping, on survival, whatever it would be, okay? Don't wait too long because if you do, they're, by then they're going to be into video games and eventually the opposite sex, okay? At this age, you can teach them things like building a shelter in the backyard. You know, kids love to build forts, so make it a game. Hey, we're going out in the backyard here. We're going to find a whole bunch of stuff and we're going to go camping in the backyard and let's try to make a tent, you know, go make the teepee or whatever you want to do. The kids will have fun. You know, they're not going to realize you're teaching them while you're at it, okay? 
you know, show them how to make fire. You know, go get the rocks and put it around. You know, don't give them the matches, but make yourself a little fire. Roast marshmallows or roast hot dogs over it. Kids will have a ball. You're teaching them a skill. They're having fun, okay? When you're done, teach the kids how to put the fire out. Skill, okay? You know, they can learn about all that stuff. You know, maybe let them help you when you're canning stuff, when you're working in the garden. Get them involved, but make it, you know, make it fun for them, you know? Trust me, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches later if you start early, okay? Tweens, and I'm going to put this as, say, 8 to 12, okay? Now, I don't have to go into food or clothing here because the same principles apply by now, you know, but now you can go into much greater training, say, map reading, water purification, first aid, use of weaponry, okay? After all, they're now getting to the age where they're going to be another useful hand in your little community, Okay. This, of course, means you have to be actively involved in all these trainings, which, of course, takes your time, okay? Uh, but, you know, think about this. You're not just going to drop a kid in the woods with a map or hand him a rifle and say, figure it out, okay? You got you to gotta teach them, all right? You know, take the time to teach them because right now, you and I are taking the time to learn all this stuff that we may need. When it comes time that they need to use it, there may not be a resource like YouTube or anything like that, you know, and I'm sorry, you're not going to learn really how to use weaponry, read a map, whatever, out of a book, even if you got them. So the only way they're going to get it is by hands-on, face-to-face OJT, if you will, okay? Teens, age 13 to 30, and I know you're going, huh, is he nuts? Wide range there, huh? Okay. Y'all remember when we were in this age age range? And most of us are over this age range, okay? Not a whole lot of, you know, under 30s. I, like a 1% of my viewership is under 30. So, you know, when we were in this age range, we knew everything, didn't we? Just like every other person in this age. We were 10 feet tall and bulletproof. 16 years old, hell, we knew everything, okay? I sure know I did, all right? Then, of course, life slapped me in the face, and I learned about everything that I didn't know. Okay. It's this age group that needs to be a fully functioning member of your MAG. Okay. That means they need to be out providing food, providing shelter, providing security, providing water, dot, dot, dot. Okay, keep on going. They have a big advantage over you or I in this regard. Okay. They're young, so they don't have the aches and pains that we do. They have more stamina. They have more energy. You need to use that as your, to, to your advantage, okay? You're fooling yourself if you think you can keep up. But we all know we're going to try because, you know, our egos still get in the way a little bit. All right. We'll use a little psychology here, okay? We've done this enough in our lives. We know how to do it, all right? Use their useful, youthful exuberance as a tool, okay? Challenge them to catch more fish than you, to cut more wood to dig more holes when you're planting a garden, whatever, okay? It's a great psychological tool at this age because they inherently want to win, okay? To prove themselves, I'm better. This, remember when we were this age, okay? They're going to win most of the time, okay? Especially cutting wood or doing anything like that. But what you've succeeded in doing here is multiple things, okay? You've taught them more skills, how to do it quickly and efficiently, okay? You've obviously gotten a lot more work done because they can cut more wood, dig more holes, whatever, maybe not catch more fish. I'll leave that one. Okay. But, you know, you've got more work done, and you've also built their confidence, okay, which ultimately is one of the best tools you're going to be able to give them in an SHTF situation. If they're confident enough that they can face whatever's in front of them, you've given them the greatest tool in the world, okay? So... Couple other side notes to this. All right, you know, I know we're going to hear this somewhere, be in the comments, but bugging out is always going to be a last resort plan, but it should be pushed off even further if you have babies or small kids. Okay, you think they're they're a handful in a car ride to grandma's? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Okay, you know all that crap. Imagine walking anywhere with them. Okay, can you imagine? Are we there yet? As you're out in the woods trying to stealthily walk through so you don't get shot at, and they're going, are we there yet? Oh, crap, you know, okay? It's like the greatest call in the world for somebody looking to steal from you, okay? More likely, because you've got this little four-year-old walking behind you or whatever, who obviously can't move as quickly as you can, chances are you're carrying them, 
you're carrying your bug out bag. You're carrying their bug out bag. Okay. Let alone if you've got the dogs. Okay. Unless you're not going to be able to do all this unless you're Atlas, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's not going to, not going to happen. Okay. So <laughs> there better be a really, you know, a, a meteor better just land in your front yard for you to have to bug out if you got tiny kids. You're pretty much stuck where you are. Okay. Now, by no means is this the end all be all of prepping for kids. You know, there's a ton of other things that need to be done. And I, I, I just wanted you guys to start thinking all the what if situations that we do as preppers. Okay. I'm sure you guys are going to come up with a million more suggestions. Please, please, please share the comments down in down below so everybody else can benefit from your wisdom. Okay. Th this one, like I said, I've never seen this before. And I'm like, holy crap, how did nobody think of this one? And it's like, you know, light bulb moment last night. So, you know, share, share your wisdom with us. But that's all I got today, you guys. You know, happy Sunday. Pinball out.